In our devotionals, we've been talking about God's purposes for our lives. His ultimate purpose is that we might glorify, worship Him, be devoted to Him as our Lord and Saviour. And we've seen some of the aspects of that already of, of being formed for fellowship and, and how church functions and how vital that is and we can't do without it. Uh, part of being a Christian and believing Jesus and being saved is being united with God and His people. But now we're talking about another purpose God has for our lives of being made to be like Jesus. We've been created to be in his image and we're being remade now that image has been marred by the fall into jesus image that he might be the firstborn among many brothers we've seen that already and we talked about how god does that by the spirit the spirit's at work in us and he uses a couple of different things to uh, really uh, mold and shape us the first of them is the truth the word of god uh, jesus says that or he prays that God would be at work in us and sanctify us and sanctification that process of growing towards maturity in Christ likeness is that the God would sanctify us and that he would sanctify us by the truth and that God's word is that truth that will do that sanctification let's have a read of Jesus prayer it's the night before his death in John chapter 17 it's a wonderful prayer and he starts like this in verse 1 Jesus spoke these things, then looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son so that the Son may glorify you. Since you've given him authority over all flesh, so that he may give eternal life to everyone you have given him. This is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and the one you have sent, Jesus Christ. I have glorified you on earth by completing the work you gave me to do. Now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory I had with you before the world existed. I have revealed your name to the people you gave me from the world. They were yours, you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you, because I have given them the words you gave me. They have received them and have known for certain that I came from you. They have believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I'm not praying for the world, but for those you have given me, because they are yours. Everything I have is yours, and everything you have is mine, and I am glorified in them. I'm no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them by your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I was protecting them by your name that you have given me. I guarded them, and not one of them is lost except the son of destruction, so that the scripture may be fulfilled. Now I am coming to you, and I speak these things in the world, so that they may have my joy completed in them. I have given them your word. The world hated them, because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. I am not praying that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. They are not of the world just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I also have sent them into the world. I sanctify myself for them so that they also may be sanctified by the truth. You can see there are a whole lot of things in Jesus' prayer. It's so dense with ideas and wonderful things that yeah, as we, we we're taken into the relationship between the Son and the Father, and Jesus expresses his heart to his Heavenly Father. And uh, talks about the glory that he's about to receive, uh, uh, that he's going to receive actually on the cross as God's glory, his grace and truth that we see from chapter 1 are revealed, and that eternal life is given. And, and Jesus talks about how we've been called out of the world. We're not, we're not to depart from the world, but we're in the world, but we're to be separate in, in different in how we are and that really is in our sanctification in the way we are growing towards Christ likeness and the world's going to hate it he talks about that but the key to the process of sanctification he says is his word the truth uh, God's word is the truth that sanctifies us he prays that and he prays that God would take that word and drive it into our lives the apostle Paul when he wrote to his apprentice Titus in chapter 1 verse 1 he says it's the knowledge of the truth that leads to godliness if you want to grow to be more like Christ if you want to 
grow in this purpose of God and be cleansed and changed and shaped and molded for for God's glory and uh, you know so that we can have the joy that's ours in being like him then we've got to have the knowledge of the truth we've got to be exposed to be transformed by anchor ourselves on base ourselves on God's word God's word he's the truth that transforms us uh, people sometimes want to separate the spirit from the word of God but they're they're not uh, separatable at all this well the, the the truth the God's word the Bible is God breathed it's God spirited uh, we read that that you, when you put on the armor of God in Ephesians chapter 6 that you, one of the things is the only offensive weapon it's the sword take up the sword of the spirit which is the word of God the spirit and the word are intimately linked throughout the scriptures the spirit's job is to take God's word and to uh, convict us of guilt and where our lives are out of step with it and to bring us a heart that wants to be transformed into its likeness and then to live it out. And he's convicting, challenging, changing, molding, shaping and so on through the word of God. And so we're going to be thinking for a couple of days about this word of God and what it's like and how it is we can engage with it most helpfully for our growth and maturity. But today I just want to set some basic foundations uh, just so we're all on the same page in terms of what God's word is, uh, what is it that we have in the scriptures, uh, what do they say about themselves and why is it that they're so powerful for this work of transformation. And so just a few categories that are worth thinking through right from the start that God's calling us to accept and believe and cherish. And, and once we do, it will really uh, elevate the importance of getting into it and uh, wanting more and more of it, cherishing it and being prepared to engage with the Bible uh, so that we're ready to be transformed by the Spirit as he takes that word and does the work in us. And so we, we, here's some things about God's word that we need to, to understand. God's word is authoritative. What God says goes. It's, he's not mucking around. It's not suggestions and so on. It's authoritative. Uh, here we read in uh, just in that prayer that um, sanctify them by truth. Your word is truth. Your word, in fact, is law. It's, it, 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 what you say goes. And you see that all right through that, the scriptures. Uh, Jesus, you know, when he was confronting the Pharisees and the scribes and have you not read? Have you not seen what God says to you? What does God say? He, you know, on a whole bunch of issues and they're all just picks, uh, bits from the Old Testament showing God's pattern, God's commands, God's way of life. And it's, he's expecting that they would know it and that they would buy, buy, buy it. And to challenge it, disagree with it is to go against God. God's word is authoritative. But not only that, God's word is sufficient. It's all you need. You don't need a separate word outside of the scriptures. Uh, we're told in Psalm 119 and verse 105 that God's word in the scriptures is uh, a light to our feet and a lamp for our path. It doesn't tell us everything about everything, but it's sufficient. It's sufficient to know God. It's sufficient to know the salvation that he's bringing. It's sufficient to uh, know the lifestyle and the, the things that should shape every decision we make in life. There's nothing missing that you need, all right? If it's, uh, so if something's coming to you from outside of the scriptures, well, you don't need it, right? It's, God's word is sufficient. Uh, to Timothy 3 talks about how the scriptures make you wise for salvation. They also then talk about how they're sufficient for uh, giving you everything you need for um, to teach, rebuke, correct and train in righteousness that we might live a life for God's glory and so they're sufficient. They're necessary. That's the third category. Authority is sufficient. They're necessary. Uh, Jesus says man cannot live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Matthew 4.4 4, You cannot live without the word of God. He is what created us in the first place, God spoke us into being, he sustains us by his powerful word, and we live by it. And so uh, it's essential, you know, you can't get away from it. You don't need to be literate necessarily, but you do need to get your fix of God's word. You need inputting into your life somehow. 
uh, whether it's someone reading it to you or discussing it with other Christians, uh, hearing something, whatever it might happen to be, getting, uh, getting God's Word into your mind and into your heart. Remember that uh, it's a battle for the mind that we're in. As we talked about worship in Romans 12, we're to uh, um, be living sacrifices. This is our true worship, devoted to God and everything. Do not be uh, conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So the mind is renewed as we hear God's word of truth. It's powerful and effective. Again, to Timothy, it will achieve these things, teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, making us wise for salvation. Uh, so authority is sufficient. It's necessary. It's powerful. It's, effect it's incisive. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12 uh, the spirit is like a double-edged sword. It penetrates and dividing soul and spirit and joints and marrow. It cuts the heart. It convicts us and exposes us to God, who it goes on to say is the judge of all and who uh, does not, uh, he's not ignorant of the world. He sees everything about our lives and his word, the scriptures, expose us and, and show us uh, you know, where we need God's light in our darkness, where we need to be working on things and changing, the correcting and, and helping us see. Uh, they're, they're twistable. Uh, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 16 talks about how people distort and twist the scriptures to their own destruction. That is, there is a meaning that's there and that you can, you can know what it says. It's not a matter of, oh, well, some say this, some say that, and oh, who knows, and... Lots of the scriptures are clear. That doesn't mean that they're simple. Uh, and because they're clear and you can work it out, they can be twisted as well by people who, uh, and even by our own hearts, when we don't like what we hear. But don't twist the scriptures. Though it's possible to do. It's to your own destruction. No, no, no. We want to know what God says on his own terms. Uh, the Bible interprets the Bible when there are things that we go, how does this work with that? Well, we've got to wrestle with it and the Bible will give us those answers. Uh, scripture interprets scripture. Uh, God's word is inerrant. It's flawless, we're told in Proverbs 30 verse 5. Every word from God is flawless. This is the flawless word of God that is here for our growth, it's here for our salvation, it's here for our edification. And you think about all the things that uh, the, the Word of God, the Bible, is uh, said to do, particularly that, that famous Psalm, Psalm 119, uh, it's just all about God's Word. It goes off for a couple of pages, but it's really wonderful. And it, it, it just shows us the life, the joy, the hope, the, everything that can come out of it. And I've got a list here uh, from, uh, from Rick Warren himself from The Purpose Driven Life. Yeah, he says, God's Word generates life. It creates faith. It produces change. God's Word frightens the devil. It causes miracles. It heals hurts. It builds character. It transforms circumstances. God's word imparts joy. It overcomes adversity. It defeats temptation. It infuses hope. It releases power. It cleanses our minds and it brings things into being, guarantees our future forever. What wonderful things this powerful, authoritative, necessary, sufficient, incisive, uh, tw uh, inerrant word of God does. That's why it's the sword of the Spirit and it can do all these amazing things. And so a couple of questions then to, to reflect on. If the Bible is all those things and it's so essential and that it's the knowledge of the truth that leads to godliness and we're sanctified by the truth and God's word is truth, then my question is, do you cherish it? Do you cherish your Bible? Are you, do you love it? Are you glad that you have it? And you think, well, you know what? I, I need to engage with it. Are you prepared to engage with it? We'll talk about how we do that in our next devotional, but are you prepared to do it? Are you going to put aside the time? Are you going to make the effort to be exposed to God's Word uh, as much as you possibly can? Are you ready to be transformed by it as God takes that Word by His Spirit and molds us, shapes us, cuts into us, 
uh, heals and, and builds character and makes us more and more like the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's pray that we would be available to God, that he would uh, speak to our hearts by the scriptures and take a mold us, that we'd be ready to be transformed. Father, we thank you that you speak in your scriptures a wonderful word, a powerful word, an insightful word, a necessary word, a sufficient word, all these things we've talked about, that your scriptures are. And so we thank you for the their availability for the, their in just about every language and they're in our language transform, uh, you know, um, tra translated into English in uh, so many different versions so that we can uh, study them and, and see the truth and compare and go, oh, that's what you're getting at. Father, we thank you for the privilege it is to be in an age with printing presses and uh, just the, the abundance of uh, copies of the Bible that are out there and we pray please that you would help us not to leave it on our shelves but to be ready to engage with you through your word we pray that you would help us to cherish your word to be ready to engage with it and to be transformed by it we thank you for uh, this mercy and love that you've shown us in not just uh, doing things behind the scenes but exposing them through your scriptures and so we ask Lord that uh, we would be sanctified as Jesus prayed, that you would sanctify us by the truth. Your word is truth. Father, please keep moulding us and shaping us by the scriptures. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless everyone. Catch you again for another devotion tomorrow.